for another year. But your tree lives on. Well, you just reduce it to a pile of chipping. Yeah, which will be composted and go to nourish the next generation of plants. Oh, right. Oh. Rory, I hope you're taking the... Where's he gone? Uh, he's over by the pond with the archer boys. Oh, saying goodbye, no doubt. Back to school for him this afternoon. Right. I'm keeping him out of the way while Jenny gets his things packed. Morning. Oh, hello, Neil. Oh, I need a hand with that. No, I've got it this far. I can manage. It's a lot lighter now. All the needles have dropped off. Oh, I was going to call round and see you later. Oh, yeah? They've got parish council meeting this week, haven't they? Yeah, don't worry. The Green Burial site's on the agenda. Uh, no, I'm glad to hear it, but it ain't about that. Uh-huh. Are we doing anything for the Queen's Diamond Jubilee? Oh, oh, nothing planned as yet. I can still remember the Silver Jubilee. Ah, oh, that was good fun. I was on the committee. So was I. Were you? Yeah, representing the youth club. The youth club? I was young once, <laughs> Brian. In 1977, you still had hair in them days. <laughs> uh, uh, you got to light the beacon, I remember. That, I did. Great honour, that was. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> Hello, Mel. What can I do over here? Yeah, anyway, look, I heard about this scheme what? where... I don't believe it. Oh, dear. Yeah. But how on earth? I mean, who told them? Someone's not happy. Uh, oh, look, here's Robert with another tree for the chipper. Oh, i better get on. Are uh-huh. uh, you going to be home this afternoon? Yeah, yeah, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, I'll drop round after lunch. Uh, can you just leave it there, Robert? Another 20 minutes and that'll be done. Oh, it's lovely having you here, Tracy. It's great being here. Back in the old homestead. It's a lot nicer than my old flower, I can Mm. tell you. Now, what do you fancy in the way of veg? Oh, there's some sprouts Susan brought over. I can never get the kids to eat sprouts. Uh, Have you thought any more about moving in? Dad, of course I have. And? I'm very tempted. I really am. It would solve an awful lot of problems. Well, then. But, I don't know. Oh, there's half a cabbage in here as well. It would mean the world to me, Tracy. House seems empty when you and the kids aren't here. You get a bit of peace and quiet, you mean? Uh, I always knew where your mum was. When she weren't chatting, she was singing. Or coughing. These days were all. When Gary's out, I turn the telly on, you know, just for company. The thing is, Dad, I've got to think of the future. How do you mean? Not just for me, for the kids as well. What would we do if, if heaven forbid, anything happened to you? Well, then it'd be your house. But would it? That's my point. What sort of security would we have? You'd be all right. Not necessarily. Of course you would. So what I thought was... How would you feel about putting the house in my name? Aye. As well as yours, obviously. Oh. It'll always be your house. Of course it will, Mm. for as long as you live. But if we had joint tenancy, then I could... Well, I could take on a bit of the responsibility. You know, make sure the rent was paid on time and all the bills. What about Gary? Since when did Gary take responsibility for anything? No, I, I mean, what would happen to him? Nothing. It wouldn't affect him. He'd carry on just the same as he always has. Well, this is his home too. Of course it is. It always will be. But he needs looking after, same as you do. Yeah. Anyway, what I did was, I phoned the Housing Association and, and I said, would it be a problem to put my name on the tenancy? And they said, no, no problem at all. Right. You just have to ask them. I do? Yeah. Oh, I don't know about that. What don't you know? Your mum always handled that sort of stuff. All you have to do is write him a letter. What would I say? Well, I'll write it for you if you like. And you can just sign it. And then you'll move in? Yeah. Well... In that case, if if you think that's the way to go... I do, Dad. I really do. All right, then. Good. That's settled. Now, shall I do that cabbage, or shall we just have some frozen peas? 
So can you drive Rory back to school this afternoon? Oh, Brian. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, he'll be so disappointed. You promised you'd take Look, care. Look, I know it's rotten, but I've got to sort this out. It, it really is the worst thing that could have happened. Well, does Annabel know who told them? No, no, no. All she said was she'd been phoned by a journalist from the Echo yeah. who said they'd be splashing the story on Thursday. Oh, who could it have been? I've no idea, but whoever it is, they've got a pretty confused grasp of the facts. And when Annabel told them it was only housing 1,500 cows... This journalist fellow accused her of trying to minimise the impact. Oh, you just can't win, can you? I mean, they know it's a Borchester land project, so you you just guess the line they're going with. What do you mean? Well, that this is the latest scheme by that incompetent bunch who brought you Borchester's accident-prone livestock market. But the market We're now plunging headfirst into a new controversy about animal welfare. The market's flourishing. I know. I mean, it's been a great success. Yeah, but do you remember the opening? All the Echo was interested in was when the power went out Mm. and Joe Grundy couldn't get a cup of tea. Yes. Have you rung Debbie? Not yet, no, no. I mean, the last thing she said to me on Friday was that the PR campaign is going to make or break this scheme. Oh, dear. And now the Echo is going with some garbled scare story before you even got off the starting blocks. So, what are you going to do? Well, attempt some damage limitation. Oh, what can you do on a Sunday afternoon? Echo's deadlines being what they are, I have to get on with drafting some kind of statement. Oh, yes, I see. And I'm meeting Annabelle in the morning. We'll take it from there. Well, that's one way to keep warm, I suppose. Hi, Mike. <laughs> what can I do for you? Um, you remember I mentioned you this morning about the Queen's Jubilee? Oh, yeah, yeah. You said you had something for the parish council. Well, it's just a suggestion. Uh, but there's a scheme to plant jubilee oak trees. Uh, we did a tree planting for the silver jubilee. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Uh, sponsor a tree. <laughs> oh, they're still here then. What? Tracy and the kids. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm just going to have a word with Uncle Neil. Oh, no. Don't forget to take your shoes off in the house. You remember what Auntie Susan told you? <laughs> Afternoon. Hello, Tracy. Hiya. Uh, could we have a chat, do you think, Neil? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Is Susan in? No, she's gone over to see Clary. Oh, that's a shame. I really wanted to talk to the both of you. Huh. Oh, never mind, you'll do. Uh, well, I'll be in in a couple of minutes. All right, I'll just go and get the kids sorted. Uh, see you, Mike. Uh, yeah, yeah, bye. Ooh. What's all that about? Oh, search me. Anyway, you were saying... What? Jubilee oaks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what they are, they're saplings that have been grown from acorns gathered on the royal estates. You know, Windsor, Sandringham. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I thought so. Oh, where would we put it, though? No room for an oak on the green. Well, I was thinking of a churchyard. Ah. An oak would be great for the wildlife area. Yeah, OK. I'll mention it to the parish council on Thursday. Ah. No, i better get this wood inside and see what my dear sister-in-law wants. <laughs> I need to have a quiet word with your Uncle Neil, so you keep the noise down, all right? <sighs> Cup of tea? Um, no, I'll wait till Susan gets back, thanks. Oh, OK. <sighs> well... I thought you'd like to know that you were getting shot of us at last. Hey? Me and the kids. We're moving into number six. Oh. I settled things with Dad. All right. And um, it's definite this time, is it? How do you mean? Well, you you changed your mind so often. It's a big decision, Neil. Yeah, yeah, of course it is. Then I had to be absolutely certain that Dad was happy with the arrangement. And he's all right, is he? I thought at first he'd hate the idea. I mean, Brad used to drive Den up the wall. Ah, I can imagine. And I thought Dad would be the same. But you know what? The thing he can't stand is the quiet. Oh. And Brad's nothing on how it used to be with all of us in there. So when my kids are there, well, it reminds him. Happy family times. Ah. Yeah, I guess he's lonely without your mum. Yeah. I mean, they were married for the best part of 50 years. Mm. That's it really, isn't it? He's lonely. Yeah. Anyway, ball's in your court now. Mm. What? Well, we can't move in with the house like it is, can we? 
Oh, all oh, right. So the sooner you get the alterations done and we can move Dad downstairs, the sooner we'll be out of your air. Ah, OK. Well, um, I'm pretty busy this week. You know, now I've made up my mind, I'm looking forward to it. Being back in my old home and being so close to you and Susan. Oh, yeah. That's what I really missed all the time I was with Den. Having family on the doorstep. Yes. Well, well, as I say, I can't do much this week. Oh. Um, but next weekend, I'll make a start on the downstairs bathroom. Oh, Rory, all right? Oh, he was very cross with you. He kept saying, but he promised me. He's old enough to understand, I'm sure. Well, you know he hero-worships you, and heroes keep their promises. I know. I'm so sorry, darling. Anyway, how have you been getting on? Well, I've cobbled something together. Mm -hmm. It's not brilliant, but it's the best I can do. Mm. I mean, it's a good news story, Jenny. This is what's so infuriating. The cows thrive in this kind of setup. It's designed for their well-being. An integrated system like this with an AD energy plant is about as environmentally friendly as you can get. And you'll be creating jobs. Quite. But what's the echo going with? That we're a bunch of incompetents dabbling in some grotesque kind of factory farming. Oh, it may not be that bad. Oh, I fear it will be. They'll put the worst possible spin on it, you can be sure of that. We'll be really lucky if we manage to row back from this. Oh, dear. Look, can I get you a drink, darling? Mm, good idea. I'll just send this to Annabelle, see right. if she can improve on it. I mean, do you have any idea who might have leaked this story? None at all. I mean, could it be somebody you've talked to? You know, those farmers that you approached to supply fodder? Well, that's what's worrying me, Jenny. Pete Wilkes has already talked out of turn once, and thankfully only to the ball. Yes. And we dealt with that. I made it crystal clear that it's all under wraps. But now, now I can't get rid of this nagging suspicion that someone has blabbed. What are you doing? What? Just took some silage out to the young stock. Oh, David. What? I'd have done that. Oh, felt like it. Anything to put off the dreadful moment when you have to sit down in that office yeah, and sort out my... those MVZ oh, records. I, I admit it, but look, here, look. I've got the notebook out of the tractor cab. Well, oh, that's a start, I suppose. Oh, only just. Look, this is supposed to be the definitive record of whatever we spread on the fields for the last however many months. And look at it. Well, what am I looking at? Well, it appears to have been dropped in the mud. Well, when you're spreading slurry, sometimes your hands aren't completely clean. Oh, so this was you, was it? What? Got the notebook into such a state. But you use it more than me. Maybe it was when you and Adam were emptying the lagoon. <sighs> it might have been. Anyway, what does it matter if the cover's a bit mucky? Not just the cover, though. Look, look. Look at it. All of it. And I don't see you leaping to the computer to do it. No, that's true. Well, I'm just saying. We both know the environment agency will be back any day. Yeah, yeah. And I've said I'll do it. And I will. After lunch. Bye, Helen. See you tomorrow. Oh, Brenda. Oh, hello. Are you not working today? I've been to look at a property. Oh, yes. Uh, just off Friargate. Near the leisure centre? Yeah, it's a bit too near, really. Lillian thought it might have possibilities, but... Well, I've been looking for birthday cards and presents for Pat. And my little granddaughter, Nolly. She's 11 next week. Oh, oh I've no idea at all what to get for Pat. Are you looking forward to the party? Yes, it should be fun. As long as everyone behaves. How do you mean? Oh, <laughs> nothing. It's just, you know, a few... Tensions in the family. Lillian's gone to so much trouble. Oh, yes, I know. She really wants it to be lovely. She's got some good caterers in. I've heard her setting it up. And there's going to be live music, a pianist, I think. Oh, really? <laughs> and I know she's putting together an exhibition of photos. You know, Pat Archer, the first 60 years. Yeah, I've seen some of the blow-ups. <laughs> there are some great ones when she first came to Ambridge. Oh, that's good. And Lillian's had one or two from me as well. I'm... Hey, how's Tom? He's fine. Yeah, really well. Oh. He's working on, well, lots of new ideas, but pork-based ready meals is the latest thing. Oh, really? So we're trying a different recipe every day. 
pork chili con carne tonight. Oh, goodness me. How very enterprising. Yeah. Anyway, moustache. See you at the party. I brought you a cup of... Oh, thanks. What's that? No, oh, I was just looking something up. David. What? You're procrastinating again. I'm doing it. <laughs> I was just having a tiny break to look at this website here. Oh, what is it? Slurry tanks. I mean, we have agreed, haven't we, that on balance, the best plan is to go for that. Oh, as we can't make the lagoon badger proof. Yeah, so we'd have to go for something like this. That's enormous. Yeah, well, that's a huge industrial one, obviously. <laughs> but no, it says here, slurry storage systems are available in various sizes. And can be supplied with a complete package of accessories. Mm. Sounds expensive. <laughs> yeah, well, if spending 20 grand patching up the lagoon isn't going to work. Yeah, we've got to look at alternatives, I know. So I thought we should at least, you know, get a quote for this sort of system. Yep, you're right, we should. Might not be that bad. Hmm. Anyway, back to the grindstone. Actually, since you're here, there's one page in the book which is completely illegible. Where is it? Oh, yeah, here it is. Now, what does that say? Well, that's not my writing, it's yours. Yeah, I know, but I still can't read it. <laughs> can't you remember what you did? This is last September, Ruth. I can't remember what I did last week. Well, it obviously isn't the paddocks. No, no, it's not top dressing. And it's after harvest, so you must be spreading slurry in one of the arable fields. Oh, OK. Um, let's see. Well, you've got black lands on the page before, mm. so chances are that's Coombell, which is how big? Um, 11 point something hectares? 11.74, could that be? Oh, yeah. So that's your croppable area, and we know it was going into winter wheat. Yield was pretty average, so you don't have to worry about that. Same as Blacklands. Mm, there you go. Oh, great. Thanks, love. How did you get on? Well, Annabelle polished up what I wrote yesterday. It was a pretty good statement in the end. And you sent it to the Echo? Oh, whether it'll do any good. And a cup of tea? Yeah, please. Did you get some lunch? Yeah, Annabelle sent out for sandwiches. Now, the next thing I've got to do is get in touch with the planning department. But I thought the plans weren't going to be ready until the end of the month. Yeah, we think we can get the formal application in in a couple of weeks. Meanwhile, the Echo hits the streets on Thursday. Oh, I see. You don't want that to be the first the planners hear about it. Exactly. They can be so insidious, these mm. stories in the press. At least with the planners, we can get our retaliation in first. Well, look, sit down, darling, and have some tea first. Oh, and I need you to sign Nolly's birthday card. This is such a blow, oh, Jenny. Let's see if I can find it. Annabelle was really depressed. I don't know when I've seen her so down. She even suspected one of the board members of having spilled the beans, but I don't think that's very likely. Oops, here we are. She wanted to know exactly who I'd spoken to about the project. There. <laughs> that's the one I got for Nolly. <laughs> She'll like that. <laughs> it's fun, isn't it? Did we get her a present? No. I asked Kate what she wanted, and she said a new backpack for school, so I told Kate to buy it. And You see, she'll have a much better idea of what's appropriate, and I'll send her the money. And you can sign this one as well, darling, if you don't mind. It's for Pat. OK. I ended up buying her a pashmina. There. What do you think? Mm, very nice. Oh, and I um, bumped into Brenda in Borchester. She was singing Lillian's praises for everything she's doing for Pat's party. Uh. Yeah, well, it's very sweet of her. I mean, Pat and Tony have had a dreadful year, and they're not out of the woods yet. I think I'll pop over and see David later. David? Why? Oh, uh, you know, just bring him up to speed on um, all of this. Octagon Foods? Which one's that? Wholesaler in Felpersham. They're on the small side, but they deal with quite a few local restaurants, and local food is their thing. You've tried them before, though? More than once. 
Well, I told you to get lost. Well, not in so many words. That's the problem. I keep on thinking they'll bite. Well, I just have to keep on trying then. I know. Trying, but not annoying them. It's a fine line. Yep. Anyway, I've got another butcher lined up. I'm seeing him tomorrow afternoon. Really? Mm-hmm. You're doing great, Tom. Yeah, thanks. That smells really good. Hope you're hungry. There's rather a lot of it. Starving. Aren't you supposed to be milking tomorrow afternoon? Yes. I must give Dad a ring. Tell him I'll have to pass. Oh, and don't forget it's your mum's birthday. No, I know. I'll be back in plenty of time for the party. I ordered the flowers, by the way. Oh, well done. Thanks. You think she'll like the photo? Of course she will. You, Helen and Henry, it's a winner. And mm. the frame's lovely. Right, there you go. Chilli con finest organic minced pork. Mm. Well, it looks great. Mmm. Mmm. <clears throat> it's a bit too much chilli. It was definitely on the spicy side. You don't really get the flavour of the pork, do you? No, it's not bad. I got dried chilli flakes from Ambridge Organics and I didn't really know how much to use. Do you want a glass of water? Oh, please. Hey, it'd be good if we could grow our own chillies, wouldn't it? Does your dad not? They're supposed to be dead easy. And it would have value, wouldn't it, if we could use our own home-grown veg? He'll be out in a couple of minutes. He's on the last page, he says. Oh, that's something I happily delegated to Adam, the NBZ records. Yeah, I've been seriously contemplating bribing one of the kids to do it. And they come down and you like a tonne of bricks if it's not done properly. I know. I know one poor fellow had part of his single farm payment docked. If the EA guys had decided to give our books a proper going over last week, we'd have been up the swanny, even more than we are already. So, uh, what's going to happen with your lagoon? Will you, will you get permission to disturb the badger set? We probably would, yeah. We'd have to apply to Natural England for a licence. Oh, more bureaucracy. But they do usually grant one in cases of damage to property. The trouble is, even if you persuade badgers to move, chances are they'll find their way back. Yeah, and do the same sort of damage? Yeah. So we're looking at a whole new system. Hallelujah. Finished? Oh, at last. Oh, well done. I need a rather large drink. How about you, Brian? Uh, well, better not. No? Ruth? I think there's some wine in the fridge. Oh, OK. So, Brian, to what do we owe the pleasure? Well, uh, the fact is, we've had a bit of a setback with the plans for this new dairy unit. Uh, what sort of setback? Well, the Echo has got hold of the story. Oh, no. And from what we can gather, which is not much, they're going to spin it as a shock horror story about, you know, industrial farming and the maltreatment of animals. So how did the Echo get hold of it? Well, I was hoping you could tell me. What? Well, there are so few people who know about the scheme, and, well, we've deliberately kept it under wraps. It was just the family and the board of BL, until we realised we'd have to use outside suppliers, which is when I came to you. We haven't told anyone. Oh, except Mum. Well, Jill's not going to go blabbing to the press, is she? No, 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 I'm not suggesting it was anything to do with you. Oh, glad to hear it. But the names that you gave me, the potential suppliers, I mean... I mean, is there anyone on that list? <sighs> well... I mean, I don't know them all personally, Brian, but they're all, you know, they're decent, well-established farmers. I mean, there's no-one I could point to and say he's a bit dodgy. What about Pete Wilkes? No, definitely not Pete. There you go, love. Thanks. I mean, it's just, he was the one who rang Martin Gibson when I was on holiday. Yeah, but only because you hadn't explained that keeping things confidential meant, even from the BL board, he was mortified when he realised his mistake. But if not him, then who? <laughs> Well, to be honest with you, Brian, the chances of finding that out are pretty much non-existent. Yeah, I suppose. And even if you did find out, what good would it do? Yes, yes, I know you're right. We've just got to take it on the chin and move on, I suppose. Well, uh, clear light like this. Mm. Oh, just look at that moon. Wouldn't mind betting there'll be poachers out. Hey, not your problem this week. Uh, not till Thursday, anyway. Oh, it's beautiful. Full moon and 
at the frost on the roof tiles. Oh, you wouldn't rather be in the Cape Verde sunshine? Oh, it was wonderful. <laughs> Feeling the warm sand between your toes? Oh, but I'm glad to be home. To our lovely cottage. It looks just like a Christmas card. Right, let's get these bags unloaded. Will? Hmm? Can I ask you something? What? Could we possibly... Would you mind if we change the name of the house? Change the name? Yeah, I've always thought it was... Well, a bit odd. I suppose. Well, you know, for an old stone cottage. Casa Nueva, it's just not right somehow. It's one of those things that seemed like a good idea at the time. But you're right. It's not really suitable, is it? And since this is a new start for us... Yeah, OK. We'll change it. Thank you. Mm. Now, come on. Let's get inside. No, no. Leave the cases. What? Well, as you say, this is the start of our married life. So come here, Mrs Grundy. Well, <laughs> You have got to be carried over the threshold. <laughs> you could put me down now. <laughs> <sighs> oh. Welcome home. Mm. Oh, it's lovely and warm in here. Yeah, it is. Uh, I'll just grab the bags. Oh, there's a note from your mum. Oh, yeah? Dear Nick and William, I've turned up the boiler and put a hot water bottle in your bed. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> There's a pint of milk in the fridge and fresh bread and eggs for your breakfast. Oh, she's such a star, your mum. <laughs> Do you know what I'd really like now? A proper cup of tea? You read my mind. <laughs> Is your mother about? No, nope, she's in the dairy. Did you want to see her? No, 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 no. I just wanted to be sure she's out the way. Oh, hey. thank goodness you've got two of them now. <laughs> this is Henry's little friend, Rowan. Oh, well, hello, Rowan. I look after her while her mum's at work and then she has Henry while I'm in the shop. <laughs> what you got there? Well, your dad lent me all these old photos. <laughs> Yeah, for the party. Oh, it's so kind of you, Auntie Lillian. Oh, darling, I've had a great time. Let's just hope it all works and she enjoys it. She will, I'm sure. <sighs> anyway, the photos. Now, I've had enlargements done mm -hmm. and I've been putting captions on them. But in the early ones, I don't have a clue who anyone is. Mm. I mean, look, um, now, now who, who, who's that, for instance? Uh, no idea. Oh. <laughs> Hang on, I'll give Dad a shout. <laughs> Dad! Auntie Lillian's here. Coming. It's all right, Henry. I'm not going anywhere. Goodness me, he's walking now. Yes, it's his latest trip. <laughs> now, come on. Let's sit back down with Rowan. Uh -oh. Morning. Morning, darling. Hello, Henry. How are you doing, Rowan? She's fine. No, no, no. you stay here, Henry. There's a good boy. <laughs> now, darling, I need to pick your brains. Uh -huh. Some of these photos, I've no idea who they are. I mean, look, your wedding, for instance. Uh, this this woman here. Uh, oh, that's Pat's old friend, Gwyn. Oh. And her husband, um, oh, oh, what was his name? <laughs> Ewan, that's it. Gosh, we are popular this morning. <laughs> no, stay there, Henry. Kathy. Hello. Come on in. Well, I, I mustn't stop. Oh, hello. Hi, Kathy. Good morning, darling. I just brought these for your mum. Oh, oh they're lovely. Well, I, I'm sure she's overwhelmed with flowers. Yeah, but... we're running out of vases to put them all in. <laughs> well, she's in the dairy at the moment. Uh, do you want me to... Oh, no. Uh, no, I really can't stop. I'm on my way to work. Oh, well, we'll see you later then. Yes, I'm really looking forward to it. I'll see you all then. OK, bye. Bye. What does Pat think she's doing working on her birthday? Oh, you should try stopping her. Well, why don't you take her out somewhere this afternoon? Give her a treat. Tea at Grey Games. Nah, I've got to do the milking. Well, isn't it Tom's day for milking? Oh, yes, but he's cried off. Oh, no. Yeah, he's got to see a butcher in Felpersham. Oh, surely you can do that some other day. Apparently not. Everything all right? Yeah, thank goodness. You see? Told you. Pete can manage perfectly well without you. <laughs> oh, I was just worried. Well, you know, it was a bit of a liberty, taking my honeymoon bang in the middle of the shooting season. And if anything had gone wrong, <sighs> Brian would never let me hear the last of it. Yeah, I know, but it's all OK? Yep, yep. Yeah, you know what he said last night when we um, 
got home. What? Uh, about the name of the house. Yeah. Have you had any thoughts about what we might change it to? Mm, not really. I, I just think it should be something English. I don't know, rural maybe? Well, I was thinking about our honeymoon. Oh, nothing Portuguese, please. <laughs> no, 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 of course not. It's just Cape Verde. Well, Verde means green. Yeah. So how about Greenwood Cottage? Greenwood Cottage. That's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Right. Well, I'll find a good bit of wood and carve a new sign. You don't mind? No. I was only thinking when I was out. I should have changed it years ago. Go on now. Off you go. Can I give you a hand? What? You're supposed to be putting your feet up. Well, it's no fun on my own. Well, where's Helen? She's taking Rowan home. And then she's dropping in on Nick and Will, so she's taking Henry with her. You ready for the next lot? Uh, yes, please. Oh, and then in you go. All right, that's it. Move along. Right. I'll take this side. Oh, thanks, love. Oh, it's nice to have you here. Not what you used to say. What? Uh, you remember... Never used to want to share the milking back in the old parlour at Willow Farm. Well, oh, that's a long time ago. It seems like yesterday to me. Can't believe how the years have passed. I don't feel 60 at all. You're just the same as I did back then. Uh, I wish I did. Yeah, I was thinking, you look tired. Are you OK? Well, I don't know. I get a bit weary. This past year has been, well, you know... Pretty grim one way and another. Yep. And it should have been Tom milking this afternoon. Uh -huh. Wish he could have picked another day to have an urgent appointment. You're going to be all right for the party? Mm. Oh, yeah, yes. I'll have got my second win by then. Helen was talking about the relaunch earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, how we should present the new packaging, what we should do for food, and I suddenly felt excited. You know... Here's a new project to get my teeth into. Oh, good. I haven't felt like that since... I can't remember when. It is going to work, Tony. We can pull the business back from the brink after all. Ah, I'm glad you feel like that. Don't you? Hmm? Oh, yes, yes. I'm sure things are on the up. Wow, that's gorgeous. Mm. Acres of pure white sand, clear blue sea, mm. and hardly anyone else about. <sighs> Took a bit of getting used to. <laughs> Did it? <laughs> yeah, it's been without the children, I think. First few days I wake up going, oh, breakfast, clothes, school bags. <laughs> Not used to pleasing yourself, are you? No, but, oh, it was great. And then... Oh, don't tease me, Will. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, I miss them. Oh, I was missing my children on my honeymoon. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> but it was OK. Yeah, we'll miss them as well. <laughs> you two, meant to be together. Well, and when we picked the kids up from school, well, I don't think Jake and Mia missed us at all, did they? No, <laughs> they like the presents, though. <laughs> yeah, I bet. So, what else did you do, apart from lying about on the beach? We ate. A lot. Oh, yeah, the food was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, lots of freshly caught fish and shellfish. Mm. And chickpeas. Yeah, quite a lot of chickpeas, <laughs> but, you know, done with all different vegetables and things. Absolutely delicious. Mm. Mum? Yes, sweetheart? Is it nearly tea time? Oh, it won't be long now. Come and show Helen your necklace. OK. Oh, isn't that pretty? It's made from seashells. <laughs> I can see that. Mummy and Will got it for me on that honeymoon. Oh, you're a lucky girl. Now, I'd better make a move. Henry will be wanting his tea soon as well. And then I've got to get myself dolled up. Oh, yeah, it's your mum's party tonight, isn't it? <laughs> Tony, how could you? Well, I just gave Lillian the photo albums. I didn't know which one she was going to use. What do I look like? That hair. <laughs> and who's that? Oh, that was my friend Rose. Yeah, a Greenham oh. Common girl. That's right. I never realised you were such a militant. <laughs> Tony very nearly left me. Yeah, only when you threatened to take the kids on a C&D march. Oh, did 
you really? You remember what it was like. But you gave up protesting. Uh, it was that or my marriage. Yeah. <laughs> that was when we went organic. Oh, I see. That was the bait to lure me back, wasn't it, Tony? Uh-huh. Look at this picture of the children. Yeah, that's so sweet. Somebody's birthday party. Yeah, we decided it was probably Tom six. So John would have been 11. Mm. He looks so like... Like rich, yes. <laughs> and look at Helen, so solemn. She was a very serious little girl. Uh, what are you saying about me? <laughs> I don't think we've got many photographs of you smiling when you were small. Oh. Not properly. Is Henry all right? Yes, fast asleep. I've put him in Matt's study. Isn't that pianist lovely? I was thinking that. Uh, we should have live music for the launch party. What? In the shop? Yes. There are some brooms. Yes, there is. Oh, besides, people want to be able to hear each other. I'm not talking about a brass band, Dad. Just something like this. Well, how are we going to get a piano in the shop? An electric one. Oh, or what about a guitarist? Guitarist, that'd be lovely. Oh, I'll ask Fallon if she knows anyone. Now, when is the launch party again? 2nd of Feb in the evening. Mm. Oh, I hope you can make it. I hope you're not talking <laughs> shop. <laughs> no, no. Absolutely not allowed this evening. You're here to enjoy yourself. I am, Lillian. I am. <laughs> well, here, let me top you up. Although I'm slightly embarrassed by some of these photos. <laughs> I think they're wonderful. Yeah, you've done a terrific job with them, Yes, Lillian. but I was particularly impressed by you in your gym knickers hurling a javelin. <laughs> <laughs> I was mad about sports as a child. I was going to be an Olympic athlete. Mm. Oh, look at me now. Oh, darling, you're still in remarkably good shape. <laughs> Isn't she? A bit of soft lighting. You could easily pass for 45. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, but thank you. <laughs> and thank you for this wonderful party. I can't believe you went to all this trouble just for me. Oh, come on, Pat. Look what you've been through this past year, and you've come out fighting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if anyone deserves a decent party, it's you. How are you feeling now? Oh, another pint or two of coffee, and I'll probably be all right. <laughs> I've made another pot. Should be ready. Oh, you're a star. And there are the painkillers. Oh, thanks. What are you doing? Uh, just putting on some makeup. Got to go to work in a minute. Oh, what's the hurry? Lillian's not going to be there. She and Matt were still partying when we left at. Well, what time did we leave? Oh, nearly three o'clock. Well, Lillian's not going to surface till this afternoon at the earliest. Yeah, all the more reason for me to be there. You're too conscientious for your own good. I'm just doing my job. Hmm, quite a party though, wasn't it? It was brilliant. Your mum had a ball. Yeah, haven't heard her laugh like that for ages. Yeah, your dad was tired though. Yeah. Hey, did you have any of those meatballs? What? They weren't part of the main buffet. It, it was one of the little canapes they were passing around earlier on. Meatballs on a stick. Oh, with a rather yummy dipping sauce. Tomato and red peppers. Was it? And there was apple in the meatballs and a little bit of chilli. How do you know that? I asked one of the caterers. Why? Because I thought if we scaled the meatballs up, served them with some pasta and the red pepper sauce... A potential ready meal. Uh, what do you reckon? Well, there are some red peppers in the fridge, and I'm pretty sure we've still got some cooking apples. So I could give it a go tonight, if you like. I said, Uncle Gary's going to drive you to school this morning. And do you know what Chelsea said to me? Hmm? She said, oh good, he's much better at driving than you are. <laughs> Cheeky monkey. And then I said, what makes Uncle Gary a better driver than me? And she said... He doesn't swear like you do. <laughs> Is that what she said? It's not like I swear at the kids, Dad, because I don't. It's just sometimes, you know, other drivers. Mm. There's your tea. I ain't sugared it. Ah, ta, love. Shame there aren't no places at Loxley Barrett. Oh, Dad. I was so depressed when they told me. I mean, half the point of us moving in with you is so that Brad and Chelsea can get a place at the local school. There will be places. Well, that's what they said, but they can't tell me when. Ah, I suppose someone has to leave, do they? I don't know how it works. It's a mystery to me. But for now, they've got to stay at the old school, which means someone has to drive them. 
And honestly, Dad, the thought of doing it every day all through the rest of the winter. Well, it's nice to think of Gary being a bit of use. Yeah, he drove him to school this morning, got him there on time, managed not to get lost. Did all right, didn't he? Now he's gone to collect him without me even having to remind him. Do him good to get out of the house a bit more. He says he'll do it three days a week, so long as I pay for the petrol. Mm. Which is brilliant. It means I can start looking for a job. So, when are you going to be moving in? <sighs> Depends on Neil, doesn't it? Because ah. we've got to get you moved downstairs first. And we can't do that till your new lav and shower have been plumbed in. He said he'd call round this afternoon to do a bit of measuring up. <laughs> Talk of the devil. I expect that's him now. Just look at all these boxes. I know. I can believe how much there was. Well, all this is wedding presents. Oh, the Underwoods van didn't get here till gone two o'clock, so we only had time to unpack a few bits before Nick had to go. Oh, where's she gone? Oh, I've just gone to collect the kids off the school bus. Oh, right. Yeah, she'll be back in about ten minutes. Where are you going to put all these new things? Yeah, good question. We're going to have to get rid of some old stuff to make room. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I noticed as I come in, that sign George Barford made for you with the name of the house. Oh, he took uh, it down. Oh, I thought it had fallen off. Yeah, we are uh, changing the name. The name of the house? Yeah, should have done it a long time ago. Only I'd sort of stop noticing. Noticing what? Well, Casanueva. It was Emma's idea. Oh, was it? When we came back from our honeymoon in Mexico, and Nick knows that. Oh, does she? I'm pretty sure she does. I mean, I didn't tell her, but she probably worked it out. Well, either that or Emma told her, which wouldn't surprise me. Anyway, first thing she said when we got back... Really? <laughs> middle of the night, freezing cold, and me trying to carry her over the threshold, <laughs> and she says, can we change the name of the house? <laughs> so, what are you going to call it? Uh, Greenwood Cottage. Oh, that is nice. Mm, bit more appropriate, isn't it? It's funny, isn't it, the way you get used to something, you don't notice it no more. Yeah. Made me realise this house is full of stuff that Emma chose. Look, you see these new plates? Oh, those are nice. Yeah, they are, aren't they? Uh, dinner plates, side plates and bowls. They're from um, Mike and Vicky. Oh. And then Roy and Hayley got us the mugs and serving dishes, I think. What, you got everything matching? Well, I couldn't understand why Nick was so keen to have new crockery. But, of course, the stuff we've been using was a wedding present to me and Emma. The white with the blue pattern? Yeah. And since Emma chose it, you know, I thought she might like it back. I mean, there's a few bits got broken, it's but... It's quite posh china, that, isn't it? Yeah, it was pricey when it was new. Well, anyway, I, I rang Emma and said, did she want it? I don't know if I caught her at a bad moment or what, but well, she gave me a right earful. Oh, dear. Yeah. What makes me think she's got house room for my cast-offs? <laughs> there are some things she doesn't need reminding of. Thank you very much. <laughs> she were in the bad mood when she came to pick up Kira this afternoon. Oh, you've been babysitting, have you? Yeah, she's back working at Lower Loxley now. Oh, right. Anyway, I'm going to have to pack up all the old china and take it to a charity shop. Oh, no, love, don't do that. No, give it to your dad. What? Well, you'll sell it at the car boot. You might get a few bob for it if you're lucky. Hmm. Huh. You didn't stay long. Oh, he's a busy man, is Neil. Could at least have sat down and have a cup of tea with us. Susan will be over this evening. She'll give you all the gossip. <laughs> so, what did he say? Well, he measured up the pantry. Uh -huh. Once he's taken the shelves down, he reckons it'll be big enough. So, how long's it going to take? You know what Neil's like, Dad. You can't pin him down. Uh. Won't commit himself to anything. But he seemed to think it was quite a straightforward job because you've got the outside wall, so it's easy to... You know, get to the main drains. And the water can be running from the kitchen. So, first thing he's going to do is order a skip. And then Friday he's going to that big DIY place on the bypass and get all the bits of pipes and drains and what have you. Then he'll start work at the weekend. So it shouldn't be more than a week or two and you can move in. Well, it's probably a bit more than that. There's quite a bit of decorating needs doing mm. as well. But we're getting there. Ah, good. Now... Um, you remember what we were talking about on Sunday? Eh? About the tenancy. Uh, what about it? We agreed it'd be better if it was in both our names. Do you remember? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, you you did say something. So uh, I've written this letter from you to the Housing Association. Here. Mm. All typed and everything. 
Did Susan do that for you? I do know how to type, Dad. And there's no need to bother Susan with this. I borrowed Neil's computer when he was out with the pigs. Now, if you'll just sign that... Hang on, I've got a pen in here somewhere. Here you are. Uh, where? Where do I sign? Just at the bottom there, above right. where I printed your name. All right. Um, uh, all right. Uh, That's yeah. it. All done. I'll put that in the post straight away. Well, Mum's called Mrs Grundy now. That's right, I am. So we're going to be called Grundy too. Who decided that? <laughs> they decided for themselves. Did you? So I'm called Jake Grundy now. And I'm called Mia Grundy. Oh, that's lovely. Look, Clary, I wrote it on my school book. Oh, so you did. Mia Grundy. <laughs> i tell you what. Since we're all Grundies now, why don't you call me Grandma like George does? OK. OK, Grandma. Oh, oh that's really made my day. <laughs> now you both go and change out of your school clothes and wash your hands. We'll tidy all this mess off the table so we can have some tea, eh? Go on, off you go. <sighs> now what we must try and remember is who gave us what. Yeah, there's a list somewhere. Oh, I brought you a little summit just to say welcome home. Oh, Clary. Yes, only chocolates. Thanks. Look well. Only I got my first benefit payment this oh, week. Oh, about time. And it's lovely to have a little bit of money of my own. Oh, such a kind thought. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Thanks, Mum. <laughs> bit pathetic besides all your lovely wedding presents. Oh, we're so lucky, aren't we? <laughs> you remember your wedding presents for the rest of your life? Of course you do. When we got married... I got a pair of good cotton sheets <laughs> and that wooden swallow that's on the wall above our fireplace. Oh, uh, Walter Gabriel carved that, didn't he? Yeah. Who's Walter Gabriel? Oh, he's been dead 20-odd years now. No, he was a proper old bull six-year bloke. Yeah. <laughs> and Neil, give me a recipe book and your dad a book about cowboys. Cowboys? Yeah. <laughs> Bad men and bad <laughs> lands, it were called. He's probably still got it somewhere. Oh, funny thing for a wedding present. <laughs> well, we none of us had much money in them days. And uh, lists at Underwoods were not for the likes of us. <laughs> Took me a while to get going this morning. You looked pretty green first thing. Uh, got no sympathy from Jazza. He's right, of course. What do you mean, he's right? Oh, I'm getting a bit old for parting into the small hours. Oh, don't talk rubbish. I can't take the pace anymore. Time to settle down. You're not allowed to talk like that till you're at least 40. Oh, when we have kids. I fully intend to grow old disgracefully, like Lillian. Hmm. Now get out of the way while I drain the spaghetti. How was Lillian this morning? Uh, it's like you said, she didn't appear until after lunch. Asked if there was any messages and that was the last I saw of her. Dad was completely shattered. Poor Tony. I felt quite sorry for him. Now let's see how these meatballs have turned out. Oh, I had an email from that guy at Octagon Foods. The one you've been relentlessly badgering? The one I've been gently nurturing. He thanked me for my call. Really? And? No, no luck. But at least he replied. Right, this is ready. Come and sit down. OK. And I bumped into Kenton this afternoon. He's doing a farmhouse breakfast promotion at Jack's this year, as well as at the Bull. Uh, when's that? Week after next. So I'd better warn Morris, and we'll be needing extra sausages. There you go. Mmm, that looks really good. Marks for plate appeal? Oh, a nine? Definitely. Sprinkle a bit of parsley on the top, and it'd probably be a ten. I think the sauce is something of a triumph. <laughs> well, let's have a taste, then. Uh, I roasted the peppers first. Mmm. Mmm. Good. That is delicious. Try the meatball. It's pork, onion and apple, a few breadcrumbs and just a tiny pinch of chilli. Mmm. Oh, Bren. That is sensational. Really, really good. Better than the goulash? Definitely. Better than the chilli? The best so far, without uh a doubt. <laughs> this is just what the Ready Meals market has been waiting for. Brian approached David and Ruth to see if they'd be interested in supplying fodder. Brookfield supplying fodder? They said no, of course. Ruth absolutely hates the idea. 
And David, really. Oh, so do I. It's awful. So, is this the first you'd heard about it? Susan came into the dairy this morning and said, Have you seen the echo? I, I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, Brian was at my party on Tuesday. Yes. And not a word. They were trying to keep it under wraps. Oh. I spoke to Jenny earlier, and apparently the echo took them by surprise. But there's a statement from BL. They heard last weekend that we're going to run the story, but they've no idea who leaked it. Oh, thank goodness someone did. I can't believe the Borchester Land Board, and particularly Brian, could contemplate such a thing. The idea came from Debbie, apparently. From Debbie? It's the kind of thing she does in Hungary. But this isn't Hungary, this is Ambridge. I know. Adam wants nothing to do with it. Really? Well, good for Adam. I'm sure most of the village will have exactly the same reaction. Good afternoon. Oh, hello, Jim. You've seen the echo, then? It's appalling, isn't it? Well, my knowledge of the lifestyle of your average bovine is, I have to admit, limited. But cows live in fields and eat grass, don't they? Exactly. So sticking them in some kind of barrack block with no access to the outdoors is surely cruel and unnatural. I don't think it's quite as bad as the echo's made out. Jill, you're surely not going to defend this. No, no, of course not. I expect the parish council will have a thing or two to say about it tonight. You may be sure. And talking of the PC, Jill, I have some good news. I finally managed to pin Alan down, and he's agreed to conduct the Promises auction. Oh, wonderful. So we can present it to the PC as a fait accompli. What's this? It's a money-making initiative by the Britain in Bloom Committee, oh. for which Jill must take the credit. It's going to be in the bull upstairs on Shrove Tuesday. So we can inveigle those who turn up for the pancake races to stay and bid in the auction. She's going to try a sausage casserole tonight. So, can I pinch a few leeks? Yeah, help yourself. I haven't trimmed them yet, I'm afraid. Oh, that's OK. So, uh, Brenda's doing the cooking these days, is she? Yeah, she's really into the whole ready meals thing. Been experimenting all week. Oh, yeah. The one she did last night was great. Actually, it was based on something they served up at Mum's party. Spicy meatballs and a red pepper sauce. Uh, I don't remember that. It's delicious. But we were talking about it afterwards, and Brenda suggested what would really make the sales pitch would be if we could use our own homegrown veg. Ah, hence the leeks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you ever tried growing jalapeno peppers? Uh. You can't grow peppers this time of the year. Well, it would be brilliant if we could use our own chilies. And how do you suggest we do that? I just think we could get more value out of the polytunnels. Grow more exotic crops, mm. you know, the kind of things that attract a premium. <sighs> and if you're supplying me as well, well worth thinking about, surely. Uh, wouldn't it make more sense just to use seasonal veg? Kind of stuff we grow already? Well, we are going to give the leeks a go. I'm not sure that I can think of an imaginative use for Swede. Oh, well, I'm talking of which, I need to tidy up some of those for the co-op. So um, Yeah, I'd better get on. Oh, Tom, uh, any chance you can do the milking this afternoon? Oh. Make up for missing it on Tuesday. Oh, I'm sorry, Dad, not today. I've been making sausages all morning and have a dozen phone calls to make. Oh, yes, of course you have. And I must have a word with Mum about the Ambridge Organics launch. But I will do it tomorrow, I promise. Well, tomorrow's your day for milking anyway, isn't it? I know, and I'll definitely do it. Oh, well, that's nice to know. <sighs> oh, it's just on my way to see you. Oh, I've got a parish council meeting. It's only half past five. Oh, I know, I know, but uh, I need a bit of peace and quiet to go through the agenda. Oh, dear. Tracy's kids playing up again. Oh, well, they're not doing anything wrong. They're no. just so noisy. I'm not used to it. Anyway, what did you want me for? Uh, I got a bit more information about this Jubilee Oak scheme. Oh, right. Well, like I said, it's a Woodland Trust thing, and they're distributing these saplings. Will we have to pay for it? Well, I reckon so, yeah. I mean, you get one free if you go for the community tree pack. Uh -huh. You know, if you want to plant a whole new wood like we've done before. Oh, yes, of course. But if you just want the oak, well, you have to pay for it. Well, I expect the parish council can do that. Yeah, well, I hope so. So whether we'll get to discuss it tonight, um, well, all anyone seems to want to talk about today is what's on the front page of the Echo. Oh, the BL Dairy Scheme. Mm. <laughs> Could be a bit controversial, that. A bit. <laughs> Linda Snell's in bed with the flu, but she mm. still felt she had to ring me to say the parish council must table a motion condemning it <sighs> in the strongest possible terms.
Meatballs made with pork and apple. Fantastic. We nicked the idea from your party. Oh, yeah? In fact, I might do the party version for the launch. Mini meatballs on sticks with a dipping sauce. What do you think? Great. As well as sausages, obviously. Oh. Anything else you'd like me to contribute? Oh, not that I can think of. Helen's come up with some good ideas for canapes made with our own cheese, and obviously we'll do little taster pots of yoghurt and mm. ice cream cones. Oh. Do you want a cup of tea? Oh, yes, please. What about wine? Uh, tea will do, mate. I meant for the launch party at the shop. Oh, right. Well, we'll use what we sell in the shop. Shouldn't we look for something cheaper? Well, what do you mean? Well, it is quite pricey. Oh, the press is going to be at this party, Tom. Uh, they're not going to care. As long as you give them something drinkable. Well, we may well get sales from it, too. Keeping the press happy has to be a good thing. I know, but... But nothing. I've had enough headlines about Bridge Farm to last me a lifetime. Yes, yes, I know. Anyway, we're only talking a dozen or so bottles. It's not going to break the bank. Oh, Tom, have you seen the designs for the point-of-sale displays? The giant cardboard cutouts of the yoghurt pots? Yeah, aren't they great? Yeah, I like them a lot. We'll show them off at the launch party. Oh, they do look good. Oh, that reminds me. Howard Friend has accepted the invitation. There you are. Ah, that's good news. Oh, there you thanks, are. Mom. He's doing all right by the sound of things. So, are you going to do the big speech, Mum? What? At the launch. Uh, oh. Um... You know, to remind everybody why they're there. Eating our food and drinking our very expensive wine. Well, it doesn't have to be me, does it? I think it should be. Well, I'm just not sure. I mean, if I stand up at... Well, isn't it going to remind people of everything that went wrong? Of course not. No, they won't be thinking that. This is the future. New start, new brand, new logo. I, I'd really rather not. Oh, Mum, you've got to. Well, can't Dad do it? Me? No. Look, Mum, you're the one who should be spearheading this event. Oh, I don't know. Um... Well, we don't have to decide today. We've only got three weeks. Well, let's see what Helen thinks. And we've heard today that Alan Franks has agreed to conduct the auction. <laughs> and since this is in aid of Britain in Bloom, we thought we should encourage people to promise things on a gardening theme. You know, an hour's pruning, digging, hedge clipping, that sort of thing. <laughs> Uh -huh. I think that's all. Uh, it's going to be on Shrove Tuesday. Oh, yes. The 21st of February in the Bull Upstairs after the pancake races. Uh -huh. Well, thank you, Jill. <laughs> right. Uh, item six on the agenda is the Green Burial Site. Jim, I think that's you. Indeed it is. Uh, as some of you already know, we've scheduled an open day for Monday the 30th of January to which we're inviting all the local undertakers and ministers and other celebrants. Mm -hmm. uh, now, we've had this brochure designed, which, as you will see, features a rather lovely photograph of the site. Mm -hmm. The idea is that this will be available to distribute to bereaved families. Could you pass that round, do you think, Jim, so we can all have a look? Yes, of course. <laughs> Now, on the day, we're hoping to get a bit of press coverage. The Echo, obviously, Borsa to Life, local radio and television, and after the event, we'll invite them all back to the bull and ply them with strong drink. <laughs> or a cup of tea, if they prefer. Uh, since this is only three weeks away, we really need the council's approval tonight, so we can get the brochures printed and the invitation sent out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, as you know, there is money set aside for this, so as long as we're all agreed, uh, could we have a show of hands? All those in favour? <clears throat> well, that looks unanimous to me. Oh, thank you. Right. Item seven, any other business? Should we not discuss the startling news in today's Echo? Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, of course, but uh, before we do that, could I just tell you about a proposal that I've received for something to celebrate Her Majesty the Queen's Diamond Jubilee? It's been suggested that we purchase a special oak tree. But what about your business? What, the milk round? <laughs> it's a completely different market. Won't affect us at all. So you're not worried? Nah, not really. 
And I have to say, I think the Echo was a bit biased, the way they reported it. Biased? How? Well, if you read the statement from BL... Well, obviously BL's going to put a positive spin on the story. Well, there's going to be jobs created. A few jobs for very specialist people, who will probably be brought in from elsewhere. Well, what about the construction? OK, there'll be some temporary jobs in construction, but come on, Mike. You've worked with cows all your life. Yes, I have. You care about animal welfare? Yeah. Well, I've read a lot about these sort of units. The cows are housed on sand and they really like it. To quote my sister, if you feed kids on crisps and chocolate, they really like it. <laughs> are you saying cows don't know what's good for them? It's unnatural, Mike. Surely you can see that. Ah, it's like saying it's unnatural for me to live in a house with comfy chairs and electric lights. <laughs> oh, wait, look. PC meeting must be over. There you go, Jim. Very well. Our plans for the green burial site were approved. Oh, fantastic. So we need to get those invitations out tomorrow. Yeah, I'll give Eddie a ring, see if he'll lend a hand. What's it got to do with Eddie? Oh, he's the official grave digger. Yeah. Is he? Oh. Pint for you, Neil. Oh, please. When you're ready, Jolene. And your idea of a jubilee oak was approved, Mike. Oh, great. <laughs> Although there was was some concern about where it might go. One has to imagine how it will look in 40 years' time. Yeah, well, like I said to Neil, uh, my choice would be the churchyard. Is there room? Well, there was a sycamore come down a couple of years back uh, in the wildlife area. Oh, down the far end, towards the river? Yeah, that's right. Well, it's a nice open space. It looked really good there. And did you talk about the news in the Echo? Oh, yes. Uh, if you mean the uh, proposed dairy unit... What else? We uh, we had an informal discussion. We'll debate it properly when the plans are published. But I think it's fair to say Brian is going to have his work cut out selling it to the village. Brian. Oh, Hello. I'm just on my way to the bank. Oh, right, right. I'm just, you know... Keeping your head down? Well, I'm on my way to a meeting, actually, but, uh, well, yes. I am a bit wary of showing my face around the village at the moment. Afraid you might get lynched? <laughs> Something like that. Mum said there was uproar at the parish council meeting last night. Yes, so I gather. You kept very quiet about your plans for this dairy unit. Were you surprised? No, I mean, but... we knew there'd be a lot of opposition... Which is why we wanted to handle the announcement ourselves in our own time. Present the facts and have a calm and measured public consultation. Instead of which... The echo beat you to it. Quite. I mean, look, Shula, I wouldn't mind so much if they got the story straight. But what they've printed are bits of gossip and half-truths, uh, along with a wildly over-the-top rant from a bunch of bunny-huggers. And our statement was presented if it was some kind of reaction to all the hysteria. Wasn't that what it was? No. It was an attempt to present the facts. Look, believe me, Shula, this is a good news story. Really? All the stuff in the paper about the environmental impact is complete rubbish. The waste is all recycled into an anaerobic digester, which creates energy. So the unit as a whole is carbon neutral. But what about the impact on other dairy farms? Well, Brookfield sells into a completely different market. But it's not just Brookfield, though, is it? What? what you mean, what, Bridge Farm, Grange Farm? Yes. Well, yeah, but they deal with specific local markets. We're trading on the world stage. We won't be competing at all. As for the welfare issue, it, look, that's a complete non-starter. Debbie runs a unit like this in Hungary, so she's seen firsthand how the cows thrive. Right. You sound sceptical. No, I'm keeping an open mind, Brian. What about Alistair? And so is he. It'd be a great opportunity for his business. No, I don't think so. Alistair's a sole trader. He could never handle a unit of 1,500 cows. You'll need several vets, surely. Well, as I said in our statement, we're going to be creating jobs. And in the current climate, that's a good thing. Mm. You just take no notice of that rubbish in the echo, Shula. Wait till you see the real plans. All right. You will, I assure you, be pleasantly surprised. Now, I really must go. Hi, Neil. Afternoon. Well, that was a waste of time. What? I've just been over Lower Loxley, see if there are any jobs going there. But no. Same with Grey Gables. Oh, well, there's not much about it at the moment. I'm not going to give up, Neil. No, of course you're not. Once I got some work, I'll really have sorted my life out. Best thing I ever did, walking out on den. Yes. And now you're going to help us with getting number six sorted. Well, I don't mind. I know you don't. That's what's so nice about you, Neil. 
Well... Dad's going to be chuffed to bits when he gets his new room. Where are you off to? Over to the DIY store, actually. Oh, tell you what, why don't I come with you? What? Give you a hand. Well, haven't you got to go and fetch the kids? No, Gary's doing it today, so I've got the whole afternoon to myself. I can help you choose. I'm only going to buy the basic plumbing stuff, you know... Waste pipes and sealant and what have you. Ooh, what about the fittings? Hmm? Shower, lav, taps, tiles? Well, I wasn't going to buy those till later. You might as well do it now. Well... With uh... two of us, it won't hardly take any time at all. We'll be home long before the kids get back. So come on, let's go. Have they gone? At last... Oh, took their time, didn't they? Oh, fine tooth cones did not come into it, Ruth. They went through all that NVZ stuff I did on Monday, line by line. Oh, dear. Well, they could see last week we were way behind. Yeah, but show me a farmer who doesn't get a bit behind with them. And what did they say when they checked it? They said that it was satisfactory. Oh, excellent. No, just satisfactory. Well, that will do. We'll have to keep on top of it in future. I'll make a cup of tea, shall I? Oh, would you, yeah. Oh, and they gave me this. What is it? It's a letter. They handed it to me before they left. Oh, right. Well, it's nothing we didn't know already. As a matter of urgency, repair or replace the damaged lagoon. Which has been haunting our dreams. Oh, quite. Anyway, it goes on to remind us that we're required to provide capacity for five months' worth of slurry to comply with the NVZ regs. Yep. And then... Well, basically, they're giving us permission to carry on spreading slurry while we sort it out. Good. But they reserve the right to prosecute should pollution occur. It's their standard letter. Yeah, it is. I mean, I know they have to lay it on the line, but, I mean, none of this is our fault. We're doing our level best to get it fixed. Well, they can hardly give us carte blanche to be careless. No, I don't. Well, I don't know what they're doing for lunch, but I'm starving. And there's a sandwich there for you. Oh, brilliant. Thanks, love. And there's some of your mum's Dundee cake in the tin, too. Honestly, half the afternoon's gone. It's ridiculous. Can I come in? Oh, hello. Oh, I forgot to tell you, Shula rang. Oh, is this a bad time? No. Uh, no, 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 come on in. Oh, if you don't mind me eating my very late lunch. <laughs> of course I don't. David spent several hours with the Environment Agency. Well, that's a good way to work up an appetite, I can tell you. I was making a cup of tea. Do you want one? Oh, that'd be lovely, thanks. I'll make a pot... You can have a bit of Mum's Dundee cake, too. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> you said you ran into Brian this morning. <sighs> yes, in Borchester. He admitted he doesn't dare show his face in the village. I'm not surprised. Well, he did get a bit of a roughing up in the echo. Yeah, it got rather personal, didn't it? Yeah. I don't think it helps, you know, portraying him as some kind of grasping money bags, riding roughshod over animal rights and the will of the people. That sounds pretty much spot on to me. <laughs> As you will gather, Ruth is not in favour of this dairy unit. <laughs> I didn't think you would be. And you are. All I'm saying is, I don't think the Echo's report was exactly fair and balanced. Mm, no, maybe not, but Brian is still going to have the devil's own job selling it to the neighbours. Although Christopher Carter was at the stables yesterday and he seemed quite keen on the idea. Christopher? Mm, he thinks it'll be an interesting venture. <laughs> mm. Anyway, never mind about Brian. How are things with you? M Mum said you were seriously thinking you might have to sell the herd. It's not going to come to that. Well, we hope not. But if it does, I just wanted to say... Well, I'm sure Mum said this to you already, but... Well, Dad trusted your judgement, and he would have understood. Well, perhaps. The thing I don't understand... Why is it such a major undertaking to repair the slurry lagoon? <laughs> Shula, where to begin? <sighs> it's not just the expense of relining it. And we have to be nice to the badgers. Who did all the damage in the first place? Yep, we need to get a special licence from Natural England for permission to disturb them. Oh. And even if we get the licence... Which is by no means guaranteed. No, we then have to fit one-way gates to the set entrance. <sighs> but we're not allowed to do that until July because we mustn't upset them during the breeding season. And even 
we keep them out of this set, there's no guarantee they won't start digging through another bit of the lagoon wall. No. So I then have to line the vulnerable area with chain link to stop them breaking through again. Oh, my goodness. Vast amount of work, costing a lot of money that we don't have for absolutely no return. What's the alternative? A new above-ground slurry tank. Won't that be even more expensive? Probably, yes. We're still waiting to hear. Oh, you poor things. (laughs) Come on. Cut us all a slice of cake, Ruth. We need a bit of comfort food. It makes sense, Neil. There's some real bargains to be had. There! Look at that. Mm. Isn't that lovely? Half price. We don't need a bathroom suite. You can probably buy the pieces separately. I just love that wash basin with the sort of petal effect. Like a flower opening. This is for your dad, Tracy. So stylish. He's not going to want petal effects, stylish or not. He'll want something plain and simple and and cheap. He's paying for this, don't forget. What about this one here? Ah. Ah. Well, that's not bad, actually. Mm. Nice, compact little basin. And don't you just love those tiles? Uh, Yeah, very nice, but look at the price. (laughs) Oh, Italian marble. Get what you pay for, don't you? But the thing is, Neil, it's going to be a really small bathroom, isn't it? So you're not going to need that many tiles. Your dad would not choose Italian marble. We'll go for a plain white tiles. It'll look like hospital. With a little bit of decorative edging, something like that. Oh, I, I don't know about that. A nice, simple, geometric pattern. It looks a bit motorway services to me. No, oh, that's mine. Excuse me. Hello? Yes, yeah, speaking. What? But but my brother was supposed to be... Oh, oh no! Oh, OK, uh, tell them not to worry. Someone will be there very shortly. All right, bye. I am going to swing for Gary. Oh, Lord. He promised me faithfully. Gary? Where the hell are you? What? What? How long you been there? Oh, Gary. Never mind. Never mind. I'll see you later. He's in the bull. What? He's obviously had a few and he's clean forgotten about Brad and Chelsea. You're kidding. Well, I've said it before, Tracy. He's got no sense of responsibility. We're going to have to pick him up. We? Come on, Neil. The kids will think I've abandoned them. And the Ed was furious. Ruth? Oh, hi. I thought you'd be finished by now. Did you want me for something? Oh, I can wait. Well, it won't be a minute. This is the last lot. There you go. All done. You can let them out if you like. OK. Come on, off it. Uh, you come. You going to help me wash down? Uh, yeah, if you like. <laughs> really? What have I done to deserve this? Uh. Well, I thought you might like to know that um, I've had an email from that company that supplies slurry tanks. Oh, yeah? With a quote. And how much? Well, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. In fact, it's, uh, it's quite a lot less than I feared. Oh, come on. Don't keep me in suspense. Just under 22,000. Still a lot, though, isn't it? Yeah, but it settles once and for all the question of whether we should repair the old lagoon. Absolutely. Why patch up the old system when we can have a spanking new one for a mere two grand extra? A mere two grand that we haven't got. But if we explain to the bank it's something we have no choice in, we have to do it. Do we? Oh? What's the alternative? You don't think that Pitt might be right? Now's the time to take a step back and admit we can't make dairying pay? No, definitely not. You know, Mum and Shula both seem to think it might be the right way to go. That's not what they said, either of them. They said Phil trusted us to manage the farm as we saw fit. Okay, but... And I don't see fit to give up on milk. I'm just not prepared to let the cows go. Not yet. 